Okay, for those of you who got the texturing on Scott source files, that's much appreciated, really. Here, I will try to talk about a bit the process of making the materials and how you can edit them and use all these files. So I really hope you find it interesting. Let's move on. This is a texture paint source file. And if we go to Eevee, you can see that these materials have a lot of detail. I built up these materials with several PVR sets and you can see that it has a lot more detail than even the 8K texture that I baked. Displaying all the bones with all these materials in Eevee is really resource consuming, so I would suggest you to turn off the collections and go displaying the model part by part. I created these materials with an add-on called Layer Painter, which is an excellent free add-on that's included in the download, and it's just great. You can mix a great amount of PVR sets in different layers, you can add filters, you can manually paint masks, so that's how I was able to achieve this level of detail. As you can see, you can turn off the pores, the scratches, well, you can edit the whole material with this, in a very simple and comprehensive way. What we are displaying here are the texture paint meshes, but let me turn this off and now let's enable the bake meshes collection. In this collection you have six objects that you can use to bake the six texture sets that conform the textures of the character. These objects have the modifiers already applied, so you don't need to worry about any technical aspects. Well, I baked the materials with an add-on called Bake PBR, which is also included in the add-ons folder. And in this add-on you just select the object and you go to the add-on tab and I selected Color, Roughness, Normals. I deselected Selected to Active and I also checked the PNG Copy. And then you just set the resolution of the textures and you bake the PBR map. Beware that baking the textures can take a lot of RAM too. So be prepared for that. Once the textures are baked, you will find them in the images folder that will be created in the same folder that you have the blend file in. And there you have all the beautifully baked textures. So let's move on to the sculpt source file. And to start with this file, note that the simplify option is enabled and it's set to zero. You know, this way you don't go out of RAM when you open the file. The final sculpt is at level 5 and it takes a lot of RAM to display the whole character at once with that kind of detail. So here you can check out the details of the final sculpt and again if you have trouble displaying the whole mesh with this level of detail you could always turn some collections off so that you don't need to display the whole character at once. So now with the sculpt layers atom you will be able to see the three phases I went through when sculpting these objects. If I turn off the layer called Final, you will be able to see the second sculpting stage where I applied the normal maps as sculpt details. For doing this, I used a free program called Awesome Bump, which let me convert the normal maps that I had generated with the materials into displacement maps. Then I applied those displacement maps with a displacement modifier into the multi-rest sculpt. And then I manually finished sculpting the whole thing. Well, if you turn off this texture detail layer, you will see the original sculpt pass that I made after I finished modeling the object. Well, I hope that you find it interesting to be able to see the three stages that I went through when I sculpted the character. And also the Awesome Bump displacement textures are included in the Sculpt Displacement Textures folder. As a final note, the important fact of having a separate Sculpt file is that you can make changes in this file and you can save them and then those changes will be read by the animation files. So let's do some changes and then if we go and press Save External in the Multires modifier you can go and overwrite the sculpt btx files and those files are the ones that the animation files read to get the sculpt details. So now if we open the Fredagon blend file you will see that the multi-res modifier is reading the btx files that we just overwrote. So if I enable the multi-res mode you will see that the changes I made in the sculpt file are now in this animation file.
going back to the sculpt file, please make sure to back it up and also don't save it with the external BTX files enabled. Instead, first pack the BTX files back into the blend file. That way you keep the sculpt file and the BTX file separate. Okay, I'm so sad because this is the last video of the Predacon series. Well, at least for now. Uh, but hopefully I will see you with many more videos covering Blendrick 6. So if you want to start rigging your characters with Blendrick 6, remember to check out the GitHub link below and also join our Discord channel. Oh, and don't forget to check the Blendrick song. Please check the Blendrick song, it is so good. Rock on, happy blending. Bye.